All right, math 30-2s. Today we're going to do some solving equations involving exponents. So let's review solving equations with rational exponents. All right, so we've already met this concept in earlier courses, specifically math 10c. Consider the following example. The volume of a beach ball is 50,965 cubic centimeters. Find the radius to the nearest tenth. So Sarah and Lee are solving the problem. And the first step, first four steps were shown. Here's our formula. Substitute the volume in. Multiply both sides by 3. Divide both sides by 4 pi. We've got an equation for r cubed. Sarah completed the solution by taking the cube root of each side of this equation. Bang. Came up with the radius. Go ahead and do calculus and figure out what that is. Lee completed the solution by raising each side of the equation to a specific power. What power did he use? Well, Lee would have used the power one third because our exponent root laws say that r cubed all to the exponent one third. We keep our base of r and multiply three times one third. Three times one third is one, and that's what we want r to the first. So whatever I do to the left side, I must do to the right side. So let's take that to the exponent one third as well. All right. So if you go to your calculators, so we get to our graphing calculator. Here we go. And we want to get a, the cube root. So math 4, the cube root of our numerator, 3 times 50,965 divided by our denominator, 4 pi. So the cube root of this will give us uh, 22.999, so about 23. And if we did this whole thing again, numerator, 3 times 5965 divided by denominator 4 pi, and raise that all to the exponent, 1 divided by 3, we should get the same answer. And you can see they're identical. All right, so it didn't matter which method we chose. Both of these have radii of 23 centimeters. All right. Now, the method we're going to use to solve an equation where the exponent's an irrational number, we're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power of the exponent, and then we're going to simplify and solve for the variable. So, if we're asked to solve for x, x is raised to the exponent of 1 half. We take that to the reciprocal power of 2. Whatever we do to the left side, we must do to the right side. So the left side of this equation is x to the 1 half times 2 is x to the first. That's what we want. x to the first. 7 squared is 49. There is our solution. Part b, I must isolate the variable x in order to solve this equation. So the first thing I do is divide both sides by 2. So I've got x to the 1 third equals negative 1 half. And now I'm going to raise the exponent to the reciprocal. So raise both sides to the exponent of 3. So x to the 1 third all cubed means x to the 1 third times 3, which is x to the first. That's what we want. Negative 1 half cubed is a negative 1 over 8. There's our solution. And for C then, step one, isolate the variable x. So x to the negative two-thirds on the left side would equal 45 divided by 5. So divide both sides by 5. And then take the reciprocal power and do that on both sides, right? Raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So the reciprocal of negative two-thirds is a negative three-halves. And whatever we do to the left side, we must do to the right side. So negative two-thirds times negative three-halves is x to the first. That's what we want. You could type in 9 to the negative 3 halves in your calculator, or 9 to the negative 3 halves, if I work that out, is going to be 1 over 9 to the positive 3 halves, make our negative exponent positive in the denominator, and that would be 1 over the square root of 9, all cubed, which means 1 over 3 cubed, which should give us 1 27th. If you try this on your calculator, you're going to get the same thing, 127th. 
You want to check it just to make sure. We'll show that that is true. 9 to the exponent negative 3 halves. Now if you press enter, now you're going to get a decimal. So let's go math fraction. And we'll get the exact value of 1 27th. Beautiful. Moving on. Changing base. Very, very, very important concept. Put a big star beside that. You need to know how to do this to solve an exponential equation. No, an exponential equation is an equation where the variable is an exponent. All right, 2 to the x is 16. The variable is an exponent. 3 to the x plus 2 equals 81. The exponent has a variable in it. 4 to the x is 8. The exponent is a variable. Those are all exponential equations. All right. Many exponential equations can be solved by writing each side of the equation using the same base. 36 to the exponent x is an exponential statement. I could express that as a power with base 6. We know that 6 squared is the same as 36. So everywhere I see 36 in the original expression, I'm going to plug in 6 squared. Using my exponent laws, I keep my base of 6, and I multiply the exponents 2 times x. So let's complete example 2. Convert each of the following to the base indicated. 9 to the 2x, convert that to a base of 3. Well, we know that 9 to the 2x could be written like that. But instead of 9, I've got a base of 3. So 9 can be written as 3 squared. So 3 squared is the same as 9. And now my exponent laws say keep my base and multiply the exponents. So 9 to the 2x is the same as 3 to the 4x. All right. For part b, do the same thing. I've got 125 to the 2 minus x. All right, so I've got 125 there. But I don't want to have 125. I want to rewrite that base as a power with a base of 5. So instead of 125 there, that's going to be 5 cubed. So 5 cubed to the 2 minus x. And our rule now says keep your base of 5 and multiply the exponents. 3 times 2 minus x is 6 minus 3x. And I've changed the base to 5. C is a little trickier, but you've got 8 multiplied by 16 to the x. I want them as powers of base 2. So 8 is the same as 2 cubed, and 16 is the same as 2 to the fourth. So I'm going to rewrite 8 and 16 as powers of base 2, and now simplify it. Well, 2 cubed is what it is. 2 to the fourth, all to the exponent of x. Keep our base of 2 and multiply 4 times x. And now I can simplify further because I'm multiplying two powers with the same base. Rule says keep that base and add the exponents. All right. Looking at example or a question D. 1 over 5, 12 to the exponent 3x has a power of base 2. So 1 over 5, 12 to the power of 3x, I want it as a power of base 2. So if you do a little guess and check in your calculator, try 2 to the 7th and 11th and do a little guess and check, you find 2 to the 9th is the same as 512. And our rule now says, well, I can keep my base and multiply the exponents. So 9 times 3x is 27x. All right, so you'd see it written like that with positive exponents. Sometimes you might see it written like this, 2 to the negative 27x as a power with a negative exponent. You should recognize both. Both could be acceptable on an exam, depending on what the question is asking. Part E. 16 over 81, all to the x plus 5. Write that as a power of base 2 thirds. So instead of 1681, we want 2 thirds. So 2 to the 4th is 16, and 3 to the 4th is 81. So 2 thirds to the 4th should be 1681sts. But that whole thing was raised to the exponent x plus 5. So 1681st is the same as 2 thirds to the fourth. And then that whole thing's raised to the x plus 5. Using our power of a power rule, keep our base of 2 thirds and multiply the exponents. 4 times x plus 5 is 4x plus 20. All right. We have to be able to do that in order to solve equations that have exponents that are variables. So next one equation. Variables in the exponent. Use the following procedure to solve an equation where the variable is an exponent. 
write each side of the equation with the same base. So what we just learned to do, change the base, you will have to do that. If necessary, use our exponent laws to change the base. All right. Once you've done that, equate the exponents. So what this is saying, if I work everything out, I get 2 to the a equals 2 to the b. If my bases are the same on each side of the equation, then the exponents must be equal. So then a could equal b. So once I've equated the exponents, a equals b, I should be able to solve the equation, determine the value for the variable. <clears throat> so let's try a few of these. Example 3, solve the following exponential equations. Part A, we have both these, uh, both sides of this equation with the same base of 5. So if they both have the same base of 5, we can equate the exponents. 2x plus 3 should equal 7. Well, that's a pretty simple linear equation. Subtract 3 from both sides and divide both sides by 2. And there's your solution. Part B, both sides do not have the same base. So we would change 343 into a power with a base of 7. So the left side is not going to change. Instead of 343, I'm going to rewrite that as 7 to the exponent. What is 343? 7 to the fourth? No, 7 cubed. 49 times 7 is 343. All right. Now we've got powers with the same base. I can equate my exponents. x minus 2 equals 3. Again, a very simple linear equation. Add 2 to both sides, and x was 5. Part C. The left side has a power of base 3. Luckily, I can rewrite 81 as a power of base 3. So instead of 81 to the 3x, I've got 3 to the 4th. That's the same as 81. 3 to the 4th, all to the 3x. So simplifying the right side of this equation, I get 3 to the 12x. I have now written both sides of the equation with the same base. When that is done, I can equate my exponents. 5x minus 1 should equal 12x. All right. Subtract 5x from both sides of this equation and divide by 7. So x is negative 1 7. And finally, part D. I've got 3 to the x on the left side. I should be able to rewrite 27 as a power of base 3. Well, that's 3 cubed. And I should be able to rewrite the square root of 3 as a power of base 3. That's 3 to the 1 half. All right. 3 to the 1 half. So keep the left side as it is. If I'm now multiplying powers of the same base, my rule says keep the base and add the exponents. 3 plus a half is 3 and a half, or 7 halves. And I've now written both sides of the same base, I can equate the exponents. Well, that's pretty simple. X is 7 halves, that's our solution. All right. Example 4. A bacterium triples every 6 days. The number of bacteria N present after X days is given by this formula. After how many days, after how many days are there 243 bacteria? So the 243 bacteria goes in for N in our equation, so 243 should equal 3 to the exponent x over 6. Use the same procedure we did up above. Let's write both sides of these equations with powers of base 3. So 243 can be written as 3 to the exponent 5, and that should equal 3 to the exponent x over 6. So I've now written both sides of this equation with the same base, base of 3. Therefore, I can now equate my exponents. 5 should equal x over 6. So to solve for x, it's being divided by 6. I multiply both sides by 6. x is 30. Answer the question, after how many days? After 30 days. There are 243 bacteria present. Last example, number five. Consider the following exponential equation. Solve the equation using a graphical method on a calculator. Well, if I'm going to solve this using a graphical method, I'm going to let y1 equal the left side of this equation, 27 to the exponent x minus 2. 
I'm going to let y2 in my graphing calculator equal the right side of this equation, 1 over 81 to the exponent x plus 3. Once I've graphed both those equations, I'm going to find the point of intersection. And look for the x-coordinate. That point of intersection, x-coordinate, will be the solution to this equation. So let's try it with our calculators. <clears throat> All right, step one on our calculator. Let's go to our y equals screen. Let's clear the equations we have there. And if your plot's highlighted, make sure you turn that off just by moving your cursor up there and pressing enter. Okay, so for y1, we said that's going to be 27 to the exponent x minus 2. And in y2, we said we're going to have the equation 1 divided by 81 to the exponent x plus 3. Beautiful. Now let's make sure our window setting works properly. So go to your window setting. Um, X minimum, well, let's see some negative X. So let's go from negative 5 to 5 for this thing. By a scale of 1 is fine. And Y minimum can be 0, just so we see the X axis. Let's go uh, negative 2, maybe 2, 20 by a scale of 2. So now if we press graph, there is the equation 27 to the X plus 2. And there is the graph, the, the equation Y equals 1 over 81 to the X plus 3. Well, I have to find the point of intersection. Let's try it. Second, calculate point of intersection number five. Hit enter three times. And there is our solution, the x coordinate, negative 0.857149. Negative 0.857149. Well, let's see if we can solve this thing algebraically, like it asked to do in part B. So I've got 27 to the x minus 2 should equal 1 over 81 to the x plus 3. Well, 27 and 81 can both be written as powers of base 3. 3 cubed is 27. 3 to the fourth is 81. So I'm going to plug those in. The left side then, keep my base and multiply the exponents. So 3 times x minus 2 is 3x minus 6. On the right side of this equation, I get 1 over 3 to the exponent 4 times x plus 3, 4x plus 12. To make sure I've got the same base on both sides of this equation then, I'm going to move that power of 3 to the 4x plus 12 up into my numerator, and that makes my exponent negative. So the negative of 4x plus 12 is negative 4x minus 12. And from here, I've now written the equation with the same base. Therefore, I can equate my exponents. 3x minus 6 should equal negative 4x minus 12. All right, pretty simple linear equation. I am going to add 6 to both sides of this equation. I'm going to add 4x to both sides of this equation. All right, so... 3x plus 4x gives me 7x, and negative 12 plus 6 is a negative 6. Solve for x by dividing both sides by 7. Negative 6 over 7 is a solution to this equation as an exact value. If we go up here and look, this equation graphically is an approximation. It got rounded to 7 decimals. Let's just see if they're the same. All right. So if you go in your calculator and go negative 6 divided by 7, you'll see that that's the same decimal value as our calculator gave us. The calculator just rounded to 7 decimals. Negative 6 sevenths is the exact value. Negative 0 0.857 and so on is an approximation. Great. You guys have your assignment. 1 through 13. Away you go.